Hi, my name is Megan Chen. I'm a second year gastroenterology fellow at The Ohio State Wexner Medical Center and the first author of the paper I'll be discussing in this video summary. My co-authors and I, including senior author Dr. Sam Krishna, would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for the opportunity to present our paper titled Changing Epidemiology of Esophageal Stent Placement for Dysphagia, A Decade of Trends and the Impact of Benign Indications. In this paper, we use the National Inpatient Sample to look at trends of esophageal stent placement from 2003 to 2013. Esophageal stents are frequently used in malignant-related esophageal obstructions, but has evolved to address benign conditions as well, including refractory strictures, esophageal fistulas, perforations, and leaks. Our study examined the national trends of inpatient esophageal stent placement for dysphagia to understand current practices and help direct future research in esophageal stent development and design. We focused on the incidence of esophageal stent placement for benign and malignant conditions over an 11-year study period that was arbitrarily split into three time periods, which were 2003 to 2005, 2006 to 2009, and 2010 to 2013. We also looked at the association with inpatient mortality, hospital length of stay, and total hospital costs. Our data is from the National Inpatient Sample, which is the largest database in the U.S. that provides a weighted estimate of 35 million hospitalizations annually. The database is able to provide patient demographics, hospital characteristics, procedures performed, and discharge diagnoses based on ICD-9 coding. We used this database to find patients who had procedure codes for an upper endoscopy and esophageal stent placement for the indication of dysphagia. Over 7,000 patients met our inclusion criteria. We then differentiate patients into a benign versus malignant group based on additional diagnostic codes that were used during that hospitalization. The malignant group was predominated by esophageal and GE junction cancer, followed by lung and mediastinal cancer. Benign conditions included esophageal strictures, esophageal fistulas, perforations or tears, achalasia, GA bleeding, and bariatric surgery. The results of our study show that the number of inpatient esophageal stents more than tripled between 2003 and 2013. Although more patients with malignant conditions underwent esophageal stent placement, the percentage of esophageal stents that were placed for benign conditions increased relative to the malignant conditions. Overall, the number of esophageal stents placed for benign indications increased over eightfold versus only a threefold increase for, for malignant indications. This increase in use for benign conditions was statistically significant. The most common benign indications for stent placement was esophageal strictures followed by esophageal fistulas, perforations, and tears as a combined group. Additionally, our multivariable analyses found no difference in inpatient mortality, hospital length of stay, or hospital costs between the benign versus malignant group. This increasing trend in esophageal stent placement parallels the trend in the literature with multiple publications since 2004 supporting the use of esophageal stents for benign conditions following improved stent design. Expandable stents have evolved from uncovered to partially and fully covered stents. This has led to a change in some clinical guidelines, and the European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy 2016 guidelines supports the use of self-expanding metal stents for refractory esophageal strictures and temporary stents for esophageal leaks, fistulas, and perforations. However, the placement of esophageal stents are not without risks and includes migration, bleeding, pain, and recurrent obstruction. Adverse events from self-expanding metal stents for malignant-related dysphagia can range from 30 to 46 percent, with chemoradiation being a big risk factor. In comparison, the adverse event rate for esophageal stents placed for benign conditions is slightly lower at 21 to 31 percent. However, the rate of stent migration is as high as 40 percent compared to 15 percent for malignant conditions. As such, the increasing trend of esophageal stent placement shown in our study highlights the need for further research in equipment design and procedural innovation in efforts to lower these recognized risks of esophageal stents. Thank you for listening, and we hope that you enjoy the article.